whistle tonight here. Jason Moss, the throw, and that pass caught by Greg Prater at the Rough Rider 45-yard line. That's what I'm talking about with that home field. If Saskatchewan can get a little help over there from the BC Lions and they lose one, Saskatchewan wins out, they can get home field in that semifinal. Can you imagine the crowd? Beautiful thing standing for that. And I know it's close to Halloween, but that's the way they come to every game. Well, Peterson a catch. We have a tackle made by Scott Gordon and Sean Lucas. A little blip in the radar here tonight for Kamal Peterson. He he's had such a great year. And it's too bad that he, he had this one game because you know I, I would have considered him and still do a front runner for outstanding Canadian in the CFL and I think his numbers warrant it. It just every now and then you have one of those games and this is one of those games. And he had plenty of company tonight. Second in the pair. McCarty left side. First down. And Calvin McCarty, one of his best runs of the night, down to the Rough Rider 20. And part of it goes to the coaching staff of the Edmonton Eskimos, too, because that's a play that, you know, you wonder why Rick Warman, Danny Machocha didn't go to more early on in the football game. And when they had the, the, the wind in the first quarter and the game was close, they, they ran a couple of plays to Calvin McCarty that worked and then went away from it. Hard to believe the score was 7-6 after one quarter. 48 unanswered points. It's as close as the Eskimos have been since. And Moss takes off and will bulldog his way down to the 11. That's that effort I'm talking about from Jason Moss, and maybe that will trickle down to his teammates. Didn't hook slide, and you see Prater just going up there and say, yeah, okay, I saw you there, that's great. Well, let's let's try and get in the end zone. They need to try to get some points in the second half of football games, especially in the fourth quarter of football games. It's been pretty dry for them over the last few games. No fourth quarter points in the last three games. Four of the last five. Threatening here, second and two. McCarty again, stood up and driven back. Last four games, 13 points total. So some question marks, a few for, for the Edmonton Eskimos heading into the playoffs. And the second half has been a problem a lot of this year. Their seven losses prior to tonight outscored 133 to 63 in the second half. But an injured Rough Rider on the play and while he gets attention we'll step out that's Maurice Lloyd Maurice Lloyd to the sidelines third and one Mike McCullough comes Down to the seven yard line and it'll be first and goal Edmonton. I'll tell you what I mean with the Edmonton Eskimos and how much a game like this will hurt them even though they're down on the, the goal line and just man to man. 1989 Saskatchewan beat Ottawa 58-22 August 7th and I was in that game and don't remember it. Mm. That was a big win. I but remember the time that's... we got beat 55 to 3 in Winnipeg in the Labor Day remake. First to goal, Moss rolls, hit. And a pass incomplete, intended for Matt Bertrand. Omar Morgan there, and bloody heat on Jason Moss. You know, it just, it, that's the, one of the amazing things about, about this Saskatchewan Rough Rider football team is it doesn't seem to matter Who's in there? This time it's John Chick. He's free off the edge. They do it with schemes. They do it with speed. They disguise. But they can also rotate people through the system. We've talked at length about their, their injury situation. They have bought in. This football team has bought in to a man. And they all contribute. It's been John Chick's best night, I think, with injury plague season. Second and goal. Looking for the corner. Incomplete. Milwaukee, the entire 
intended receiver for the bust up by Lance Frazier. That's kind of been an unsung hero of this game tonight has been Lance Frazier. He's the guy who was in coverage when created an interception for a touchdown by Renault Williams. He's had a couple of knockdowns, a couple of big tackles early in the game in the open field to force Edmonton to punt the football away. And he, and he was right, right in perfect position on that play. Almost had the interception, had a better chance at the action than the receiver. So third and goal from the seven. We'll let you listen to this. are saying no boss. Kevin Challenger, the intended receiver. Another turnover. Second turnover on downs, the sixth of the game for the Eskimos. Saskatchewan will finish the regular season in Toronto. Edmonton finishes against Montreal at home. This will be the 11th win for the Rough Riders. 23 wins in the past two years. Last time that happened, the 70-71 campaigns. So Saskatchewan takes over on their own seven-yard line. And Stu Ford going to get more work. A couple really, there, Tyler clutch the tackle. It really has been a, an amazing run. I, Leader Post wrote about that this this week. 24 wins over the last couple of years. You mentioned between 70 and 71. The last time since 77, the team's only had seven winning seasons. And last year and this year, two of them. They will be guaranteed a winning season, 11 and six after tonight. And it's chance still to host the 75. Second down look in Dominguez. Spun around and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Five minutes left, and Saskatchewan will have to kick. Tough situation for coaches like this, and we don't see this kind of game very often, so they don't get into this situation very often, but I know Ken Miller would love to be sitting a lot of the guys like Matt Dominguez who are coming off injury, but with limited roster size, you, you just you can't do it. There's just not enough receivers. I was going to ask you, as soon as Dominguez was the target, with his history, should he be in in a 49-point game, or is he useful down the stretch if he doesn't get reps? He's got to get back in the in the flow of things, but well, with this two-edged sword, with this much time, Chris, I, I think you'd want to get him out. But again, with a limited roster size, it's it's tough to do that. I mean, once you put Michael Palmer in there and you, you get you get Stu Ford in there, you're kind of down to your backups, right? Jamie Borum will run it out and concede two points. The first two points for the Eskimos since the end of the first quarter. And tonight's game story is brought to you by Molson Canadian. This is our beer. Ricky Ray took a hit from Maurice Lloyd early on in this football game and did not look right after it. Six turnovers for the Edmonton Eskimos. Their fumble challenges continue. Stephen Giles. Stephen Giles did that. And when he did that, he came in. And it's pretty simple for Ken Miller. The one thing that, that the quarterbacks know is if they throw picks, they'll be standing beside Ken Miller. And that last game in Toronto looks like Michael Bishop may indeed. And we don't want to be presumptuous no. because it's been hard to figure out the <laughs> three ring circus quarterback wise, but looks like Michael Bishop might go back to Toronto as the starting quarterback against his old team. You know, he's, he's looked really good in this since coming in. And I thought he was a little hesitant in his first series, and, and that doesn't surprise me. But once he got the wind at his back, he was he was bang on. His receiver's making a bunch of good catches. But, but Ken Miller said... 
Ken Miller this week said there's three criteria that he puts on his quarterbacks, three things that he looks for. One, they have to operate the offense. In other words, have a good understanding of the offense, understand the play calling procedure and what they're doing. They have to, number two, make good decisions. That's the interception factor that he's talking about. And number three, three then go out and make plays. And he also said, which I found interesting, is they don't have a depth chart that's the normal type of depth chart here in Saskatchewan with quarterbacks. It's a horizontal chart. And they've left the Eskimos horizontal tonight. Too. I, I just think they, they won this game physically early on, and, and Edmonton just did not regroup and, and didn't match the intensity physically, which is uncharacteristic of Edmonton football teams when you think of their history. But they have been a bit Jekyll and Hyde, the Edmonton Eskimos. I mean, they, they go into B.C., haven't won there since, I think, 2004, and beat the Lions 27-20. And then lose and don't look very good at home to the Lions 43-28, although they did have the lead in that game and then had some fumble issues. There's the Moss, swings it out. There's Kamar Peterson, cutting it back across midfield to the Saskatchewan 52-yard line. Edmonton Eskimos had five home-and-home -home games this year, home-and-home -home series, and split all five. And I'm one that's hoping no team has five home-and-home -home series next year on the schedule. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that's a bit much, but some coaches don't seem to, to mind it. I... I think it's a bit much to have that many. I mean, you have to have your Labor Day matchups and the Labor Day rematch. That's guaranteed, but maybe one other in the season is is enough. When you split those, and, and the Edmonton Eskimos didn't just split. It wasn't like they, you know, they, they competed.